everybody, it's Emmy from Frugal Money Saver. Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about freezer inventory. So if you're interested in learning how to save a little money, keep your food in a rotation so that it's always fresh and delicious, stick around, let's do this. Okay, come on down. I'm going to show you my freezer. No judgment here, okay? Because I'm showing it, I'm being real. So it might be a little messy, but this is who I am. Nothing crazy. Okay. What I do to start at the beginning is I take everything out of my freezer. I do it in small batches, and I'd advise you to do that as well because you don't want your food to spoil by defrosting. So I do a couple of items at a time. I log everything down on my freezer inventory, and I will show you my freezer inventory in a few minutes. I do everything. I'm talking about the half a bag of blueberries. I'm talking about the one cup of beef broth. Label everything. <laughs> this is another tip that I can't stress enough. Because somebody, if it's not labeled, is going to think this is Land Lakes garlic herb cheese and it's going to sit in there because nobody's ever going to use it. <laughs> but it is one cup of beef broth and I know that it is on my inventory. Okay. Um, the half a bag of peas that shoved in the back. The cooked rice. Um, everything is inventory. My herbs from last summer, my basil that I grew, a little quarter package of tater tots, frozen veggies in package, everything is on that inventory. Okay, here we go again. Now, if you were to see this in your freezer, you'd be like, what is it? Ah, scary. It is, again, one cup of beef broth. Doesn't have to be anything fancy when you do this, a little tiny scrap piece of paper, and I just put it on. I know it's here, and I know it's on my inventory sheet. Why do I do this? Because if we don't do this, food gets pushed in the back, it gets spoiled, it gets freezer burned, and that is money lost. It's like taking money and throwing it in the garbage, literally because we are not being vigilant with what we already have, so we're buying more, and then we're not rotating it the way we should. Okay, here's my uh, meat draw. Now, there's two of us home. My grown son lives down the road a bit. So it's just my husband and I. Now, what I do is I buy large family-sized packages of meat, even though there's two of us. If you've ever looked at the price difference between a tiny package of chicken breasts and a large package of chicken breasts, it's significant. There is a huge difference. We always buy the family packs and then we divide them into smaller portions and we label everything by date. My husband does this actually with our food saver, which was a little pricey when we bought it, but we bought it with coupons and, um, Cole's cash back, so we really did well on it, and I would do it again because it's a great investment. But what we do is everything has got to be labeled and dated with meat. I'm big on that only because we use the older first and work our way. Common sense, getting back to buying the bigger package. Even if you are one person, buying a package of eight chicken cutlets, and let's say you ate one chicken cutlet a week, that's eight weeks, you've just saved yourself a ton of money instead of just buying the small packages of two cutlets every week for eight weeks. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So buy yourself a little, buy yourself the bigger packages. It's just so much more economical. And then divide them. Even if you don't have a food saver, wrap them in good plastic wrap and then, you know, some foil and you're good to go. I'm not big on putting foil against food though. That's, that's my own pet peeve, but I don't. Okay, so you can see we've got bacon here. Everything in this freezer and refrigerator was bought basically on sale. If you can see here, I don't know if we can get in and see this, but here's my chicken. Okay, I don't have my glasses on, I'm keeping it real. I think I paid, what does that say? Really not much a pound. 40, what are, 49 cents a pound? No, I paid that was my husband's help me. I paid $4 for the entire chicken. So that's not, you know, that's really good. And that whole chicken will last us, and then I will freeze what we don't eat after I cook it. 
So this is what I do with my freezer. Now let me show you my freezer inventory, okay? I'm back. Okay. Here's my freezer inventory. This is ongoing. And this is what I would encourage you to do. I don't take everything out of my freezer once a week and do this. I did this a while ago. And what I do is keep adding to it. In other words, I don't know if you can see this. This says pork chops. Every time I get a pork chop and my husband makes me a package of them, I put a line. When I use it, they get crossed out. If I make more, I add to it. This is what I do. Everything that's in my freezer is on this. This is a genetic, a generic inventory list that I just printed uh, offline for free. Use a regular piece of scrap paper. Use a, a notebook, which I just bought, and I'm so excited because I have these little pieces of paper all over my house, and now I'm gonna go into a notebook like a big girl. Okay, and now, this is the next thing we're gonna do. I have just, I have notes. Um, can't lie, there's some things that I don't wanna forget. Then what I do after I have my inventory, it's got everything. What I do then is I look at what is on this list and then I think to myself, what's in my pantry and what's in my fridge? Now, the fridge, you're in and out of all the time, so you have a pretty good idea of what's in your fridge, okay? So what I do then is I take a monthly calendar, again, just some generic calendar I printed off for free for, um, on the internet, but I am going to be using this soon. It starts in May and I can't wait. We're gonna do this together, so that's exciting. And then this will be a thing of the past because everything will be in one space, which is just more logical. Then what I do is I start making my menus for the week. I usually do this on Sunday, okay? So this is just, um, this was the past week, okay? We had roast chicken, those pork chops. I made a lo mein with them. Um, uh, oh, we did soup with noodles, pasta and broccoli rob. This way, I would look at my freezer menu and every time I thought of a meal plan, I would say, do I have that? Yep, here it is. Look at this, I have a package of white rice already made in the freezer. Okay, cross that out, I used it. Next time, what I'll do is when I make white rice, I will make an extra batch and I'll freeze it and replace it. And I will put another line next to it. Does this making sense? It's an economical way to do it. When I go to the food store then, I know that I have got whatever, six packages of chops in there, and I know I have two roasting chickens. So even if they're on sale this week, I'm not going to buy another because I know within the next three weeks or so, they're gonna be on sale again. And then I will replace it because I'm sure I would have eaten one by then. Very, very important to rotate, check your dates, keep it moving, and use up those little scraps, that half a bag of corn, the half a bag of peas. That will grow great in your stir fry. Throw them in, perfect. You've got a delicious meal with one of the pork chops. It's just a way of making our food dollars stretch. So I hope this was interesting. I hope it was helpful. Please, if you have any questions, put them in the comment below. Please, if you like this video, if you found it informative, please give me a subscribe, give me a like, ask me questions. Are there videos you'd like to see me make? I'd be happy to do it. We have just touched upon meal planning with this but we are gonna delve so much further into it. I just wanted to encourage you in this one to get into that freezer of yours, look what's there, write it down, use it up. It's money that you spent, that you deserve to use. Don't waste it, please. Thank you so much for listening. I wish you blessings and have a beautiful day. Thanks again, bye-bye.